Welcome everyone to this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio. I'm Tim Grady and I'm here with Lou Weiss, who is the president of All Metals and Forge Group. They are a manufacturer of open die forgings and seamless rolled rings. Some of those rings become very large gears like the gears you see behind us. If you're interested in industrial forgings for machinery, check out steelforge.com. Joining us today is Jim Orico. Jim is president and founder of Dream to Product, an interesting concept we're going to explore with him about helping individuals who have that idea in their head turn it into a product in their hand. Jim, welcome to the show. I thank you, Tim. Nice to be here. So give us a little background on Dream to Product. What does it do? How does it help my idea? Well, Dream the Product is really uh, uh, sharing a passion of mine with the rest of the world uh, and a talent. So I, I have a 25-year career of designing and making products in many different industries all around the world. And I found that I just get really, I really enjoy working on products that can actually make it out into the real world and, and start doing something ideally to improve the quality of life one way or another uh, for everybody else. And uh, Dream the Product is a service. It's a way that we can share time, our time and talent to help other companies bring their dream products to life, things that maybe were considered impossible, making that possible and, and ideally making it in the USA. I think I gave you the name, the passionate manufacturing entrepreneur. Does that about size you up? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I guess if you start your own business, it's got to be because you're following the passion. And I really see an opportunity where we can uh, bring products that improve people's quality of life. Uh, we should always be pushing to do more uh, to improve quality of life. And this has been just an awesome opportunity where we're, we're helping, um, we don't have our own products. So we make other people's products. Um, and, and we really kind of see that as a, a, a way to serve others and do some good. When you say you're making other people's products, um, are these long-term projects or are these uh, for startups? And then once they get past the startup stage that they then start producing their own, either through their own facility or some third party? Well, um, actually, we, we do both. Uh, so we work with startups um, and we work with um, sometimes a billion dollar company. Uh, we're, we're a nine year old company, um, young, trying to grow fast, uh, always hungry for more work. So we haven't said no that often. And so we do a variety of things right now. Um, you know, catching more work, trying to stay busy, especially nowadays um, with what the challenges the pandemic brought. But uh, I'll just give you a few examples. We are making a product um, for a company called Pedal Cell. Um, they are a startup. So they, uh, came up with a really cool product that you can charge your cell phone and other devices while riding your bike, but you can, it's a smart product where it, uh, if you're pedaling harder, it can charge your phone faster um, as opposed to just keeping one lower rate. And uh, they are a Chicago startup. Um, and we've, we're now actually right now building their second uh, production run. They've been very well received. Um, and we've really been helping them through kind of all the learnings on getting something from a prototype into production. And at this point, you know, we're in the thousands with them of their product. 
um, helping them anyway. Uh, maybe another subject later in the show about the trials and tribulations of supply chain problems. But um, <laughs> and then another example would be um, the Metroflex company, which is you know one of our best customers. Um, they've been around for many years, based in Chicago, and they they have engineers, but we still help them um, because they want to. They always want to try to do more. Uh, than maybe what their internal capabilities uh, and capacity are. So we've helped them. Um, we're really proud of the help we gave them on their um, low pressure drop strainers that um, are actually eco-friendly. Uh, they reduce the current load that the water pumps, and I'm talking about big pumps that supply buildings. Um, and so not only did we help them with products to increase strainer efficiency, but we're doing some cool, we're making some of it for them where they have a product to strain iron out of the water stream with these powerful magnets. We help them figure out how to do it cost effectively in the USA. And we're actually doing that um, right now. <laughs> actually, we're building another order for them of these magnet rods for various pipe sizes. That's interesting. You're saying that there's uh, iron in the water supply system. Yes, it, it can, uh, and it can uh, cause uh, accelerated wear on the pumps. Uh, the pumps okay. are very, very expensive okay. pumps, and by pulling the iron out, it uh, extends the life of the pump. And just using their strainer, generally speaking, it is uh, reduces energy consumption. Interesting. Okay. Jim? So, Jim, in terms of supply chain problems that you brought up, and Lou and I are not only talking about that quite frequently, we're putting out uh, a monthly easing, which also speaks to the subject. What kind of supply chain problems are your idea people, entrepreneurs, running into? Well, uh, you know, we're the supply chain problems are at every level and at every every customer we have has a supply chain problem of some kind or another uh oftentimes we uh our customers supplying components that we're assembling here um we're putting together um hardware bags that go into barbecue grills we're doing things um for various companies and it's been a struggle. Uh, I'll give you a quick example, back to the pedal cell. They've, uh, they have a circuit board, custom circuit board. And as you know, especially with circuit boards and com computer uh, uh, chip components, um, they've got a back order. We're literally receiving like 30 circuit boards now, mind you, we have a, a, the batch is like an order of like 1,000, but we are um, helping them out by doing things even just 30 at a time. So we're getting circuit boards, 30 circuit boards like today, and we're going to try to finish the assembly so that they can start filling their back orders. Um, and so we've, we've found that we've, the way we're set up here, um, we're fairly flexible. And so starting and stopping is not nearly as painful as it can be in other facilities where it's just, you know, you, you have to, it's just a longer setup, et cetera. Uh, so that's been kind of some things we've been doing, being able to start and stop and then keep our people busy, jump on something else. Oh, we got inventory for that. Let's do that now and keep going back and forth. Um, we, we feel like it's a good service um, for our customers, especially now, you know, if they're not successful, we're not successful. So we're really trying to do what we can to work with, you know, what, what can, what inventory can they get a hold of now? Let, let's, okay, we can build, we can build 30, we can build 50, you know what? Let's build it. Uh, because that's 
you know, 30 or 50 less customers they have that are going to be waiting for product. Uh, I'm curious, aside from you helping in uh, design and engineering and uh, assembly, uh, are you at all involved in marketing your client's product? No, uh, you know, we're a bunch of uh, mechanical engineers here and, and production specialists. Um, I don't think you want us trying to sell a product. Uh, we're, we're, uh, I've got a, a great salesperson. Uh, her name is, is uh, Deborah Overby. Thank goodness we have her um, and she helps us sell our services. But aside from that, we're really good at designing things and making things. And that's where, that's where it ends. The beginning and end. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Jim, any other, I mean, you've been at this a while, nine years. Uh, in your memory banks, uh, what a couple of other cool products that you took from an idea in somebody's head, their dream, into the, uh, the commercial application of it? Um, there's, you know, ironically, some of the coolest things were under NDA that we can't even say who <laughs> we for because they're publicly traded. And so, um, but I will say that, you know, we help design medical devices here as well. And we've had the fortune of designing um, a laparoscopic surgical device that uh, got FDA approval and helped. Uh, we're not making it here, but we really were kind of instrumental in, in getting it to the finish line. And it helps with uh, hernia surgeries and uh, other uh, tissue fixation and laparoscopic surgeries. Um, and uh, so it really directly helps people, you know, in surgery, which is really cool. And the cool thing about that product is that it goes, it's, go, it's laparoscopic, it goes in a very tiny hole that they cut in your body. And so some of the parts in this assembly are so small, you can accidentally inhale them. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, that's nice. funny. That's nice. <laughs> So in terms of the production, Jim, are you producing some of it there? But I know there are networks, for instance, uh, out there of CNC machines uh, that may be tied to a, uh, uh, a company that said, if you want production time, we can find your production time at three in the morning in Bangladesh on this CNC machine. Uh, are you outsourcing any of the production or is it all held in house? So we focus on um, final assembly, uh, kitting, and packaging. Um, we're not really doing any part production here, with a few exceptions. We do have lasers, um, and we do have 3D printers. Uh, so a lot of the individual components we're sourcing globally. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, a product, it makes sense to have a mix of components. Some are made in the USA, some are made in uh, overseas. And we kind of try to help strike a balance of um, risk and cost. Uh, and that's, it's always, every product is different and how, how you strike the balance because, and, and, and we have an assembly facility here that of course, we always want the opportunity to assemble in the USA. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. We always try to be as smart as we can to, to catch those opportunities here. So for the sake of our uh, listeners and viewers, why don't you give us uh, your uh, website information so that they can contact you direct? Sure. Um, our website is Dream to product.com that's dream to product dream to product.com and uh, you can kind of see some examples of things we've done and very you know we've done way more than what's on our website and there's a way some ways to contact us and we'd love to 
have a conversation. We certainly have the capability to, to take on more and interested to help solve and be of service. So getting back to uh, the supply chain and your customers having their own issues with supply chain, what's making you successful in your ability to be able to source components uh, to make an assembly or what have you that your that your clients haven't, can't, won't, whatever? Well, um, first and foremost, our suppliers are vetted. Uh, we're ISO 9001 certified. Um, we uh, work with suppliers and kind of very uh, carefully add them to our supply chain. We, the suppliers that we have on our, on our approved list, we've worked with for many years, especially nowadays with the, um, the problems relationships with suppliers are more important than ever. Um, there's, you know, everyone has some, uh, some things they can, you know, there's a, some things have become impossible to do for expediting. Some things are still possible and kind of leveraging those relationships has been kind of our main uh, success with trying to get enough to uh, you know, find a compromise so that we can still keep things moving. Maybe if we didn't get the full quantity but we were able to you know, keep the wheels turning here with a, a compromise quantity that you know, kind of reduces the pressure on the supplier as well so that they can, you know, uh, so that, that's been uh, extremely helpful um, during these times. Do you yeah, see, go ahead. I, I was gonna ask, uh, do you see, uh, anything coming down the uh, supply chain road that would indicate that things are gonna start lightening up? Uh, I, I wanna ask the same question to you. <laughs> Maybe, I think, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm not that smart to, in that regard to know. Uh, we're hopeful that it's going to be getting better. Um, I don't see any signs that they are, to be honest with you. I don't see any signs that things are getting better, but, um, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to see, I think, you know, COVID becoming considered um, more of like the common cold where you don't have to you know, not work for five or 10 days. And then those kind of like fluctuations in labor, I think would probably help. I, you know, so I, I'm not sure. I don't see it getting better, but I'm hopeful. So here's the collective opinion of Tim and I, and Tim, if I speak not directly to your opinion, you can butt in. I don't see it getting better, period. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that we're, I don't think that we have the right tools. We don't have the right people. We don't have the right government officials. We don't, there's a lot of things that we don't have right. And as a result, uh, for example, you know, we've had, we were having this problem quite a while. Um, you can't get containers, you can't get trucks, you can't get truck drivers. And um, now in California, the longshoremen are negotiating again their uh, contract, which they went on strike three or four years ago and shut down the LA port. Well, the LA port, there's nothing to shut down because everything is clogged. So I don't know where they're planning to shut down and put all this stuff, but the bottom line is it's not smart what we're doing. Yeah, I, I think that uh, we need to um, try to cooperate and work together because 
we're only hurting ourselves and um, you know, we're doing whatever we can for our people here. Uh, we try to treat the people that make the products for our customers. We're trying to treat them like Kings and really uh, we've always, even without the pandemic, we've always treated people um, so that they want to stay here. And I think that that's just more important than ever. Um, just people respecting each other and, and seeing if we can, you know, get out of this together and grow together and, you know, whatever benefits come should go all the way down to the entry level factory worker. They should feel a benefit too. You, you made a point, a comment about that we should all work together. And uh, Tim and I have almost made it a rule that we don't talk politics. And that was almost a political statement in that people should work together. So without me talking politics, in a place called Washington, D.C., they don't have a tendency to work together. I, I think that we should consider the current state of things as an emergency. And when you're in an emergency, you set your differences aside to save things from getting, you know, collapsing or whatever. Uh, and I, I see that we, we need to be working really hard to prevent what could be even worse. Well said, and clearly you do understand the environment in which we live and all the trials and tribulations. It's a, it's a sad commentary. Uh, and Tim and I talked to a lot of people and uh, the, the, pro the problem exists on such a broad basis. Uh, and you don't hear a whole lot about how we're gonna fix it. But I would say that, uh, you know, we should always keep our spirits up we're seeing even in this environment, some really cool new products getting out uh, and making a difference that there's, there's still uh, even small uh, things that can break through and, and get into the market and, and even in this environment. Um, so we're, you know, it's the American spirit. We always, uh, we can, we're problem solvers. Uh, we're problem solvers here, but you know, I feel like the American spirit is a problem solving spirit. And uh, we, I think there's that, that hasn't gone away. Uh, we need to do more of it. You're on. Jim, uh, one final question as we wrap up this segment. What's the perfect prospect for dream to product? Uh, the perfect prospect is um, a company that uh, understands the, the value of innovation and that uh, is, is looking to um, grow and uh, open to the possibilities um, even looking at if something is currently made overseas and they're kind of like, ah, well, you know, it's impossible to make it here. You know, it's just because, it, you know, it would cost so much. And we we're very, uh, you know, uh, we're problem solvers. Like we said, um, we figure out ways to reduce labor content and make it cost effectively here in the U.S., so I would say companies that want to innovate, that don't have the resources internally. And then those that are thinking about, you know, bringing something that's made in Asia and they think maybe it's not possible, but I think that some things are possible. They need to be, I think Harry Moser would be a great one to, to really, you know, share that it is possible and there's a lot of benefits too. Um, so leave you with that. 
uh, being that you mentioned Harry Moser's name, and I don't know if you know this, uh, Harry Moser has started his own show on the Jacket Media Co. Uh, network. Uh, we've already done uh, two shows. Uh, he's going to be doing them monthly until we can convince him to uh, do it <laughs> weekly. Um, my executive producer probably will be coming storming into the studio any minute telling me to shut up. Uh, <laughs> Harry's a great guy. We know him a long time. We know that we discovered you through Harry. Um, and he's, uh, he's uh, quite, quite the guy in the reshoring world. Yes, he is. So. Well, Jim, we appreciate you being with us and sharing what Dream to Product does. I think it's a, a great enterprise, particularly helping companies. And, and I understand the situation. The company wants to do X, but they don't have the resources for X because their ABC through to X resources are all maxed out. So uh, I, I hope they turn to dream to product.com and give you a visit. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Lou. It was a pleasure. As always, thank you. And while you're surfing the web, please stop by jacketmediaco.com where you will find all of the episodes of Manufacturing Talk Radio along with the Wham! podcast, Hazard Girl, and our monthly shows. And Harry Moser is one of them, Moser on Manufacturing, Manufacturing Matters with Cliff Waldman, and just check us out. We've got new shows coming. We appreciate you listening and being with us on Manufacturing Talk Radio.